We're talking Netflix Dracula and shameful levels of vampire lust. Then a review of The Witcher and whether or not Henry Cavill is hot. The answer might surprise you. And Pitney gets hit on in a hilariously disturbing way on Scruff. And in Austin, everyone is choking to death on pollen. Plus, a new page in Pitney's New Life Diary and an oracle rating for 2020 in the Year of Woo. Lastly, mea culpa, mea culpa, mea maxima culpa for the sound mix in this episode and probably the next few episodes we record. We're dealing with a learning curve when it comes to recording and editing and mixing and oh my god, I'm freaking out. Believe me, I know it could sound a lot better. Bear with us. In boutique. We may be awful, but, but we're, we're right. right. Okay, so I just gotta say, so the last few nights, I've finally had time to do a little Netflix binging. Oh, because your mom's been gone. Yes, which is fabulous, because you know I love my binge-watching, and I have not had time to do that in a month. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so I was very intrigued by the Witcher series on uh, Netflix, because I'm, I've am i never read the books, but I'm a big fan of the video game. Oh, it's a video game? Okay. Yeah, I, I, yeah. You know I don't know things. And... <laughs> Like, you know, I'm also, like, a huge Dracula fan. Hello. We didn't oh, totally. even go into that. And so I was excited by that. Oh, yeah. So. So the Dracula thing is like a BBC thing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And apparently it's three episodes long and they're about, I don't know, 90 minutes, two hours a piece. I, I don't Somewhere around there. I don't know. Maybe 90 minutes. Oh, that's the whole series is three episodes? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And I watched it and it's weird and it's interesting and all three episodes are totally different interesting okay like the first episode is like an ancient time period the second episode focuses all on you know the voyage from you know the novel uh-huh so that's not like a spoiler. It's just focused on the, you know, the, right. You know, well, the classic the voyage story. from the novel where the ghost ship comes. Yeah. It's focused right. on that. Yeah. And the third episode, which is also the final episode where Dracula, you know, dies, although you don't really know if he dies. So maybe it'll go on, but I right. won't spoil it because it's weird. But it's, it's done the way the book is or. But uh, it's they... set now in modern times. Oh, interesting. Okay. So each of the three 90 minute episodes of this show are totally different. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it was like really, really, really interesting. And there was a lot to do online about, you know, Dracula's bisexuality in this. But I had seen evidence of right. that in many other movies and it was not that revolutionary the way that the media is making it sound oh okay like, you know there's always I, I mean I was expecting to see like you know Dracula going down on a dick or something you know <laughs> okay but it was no more overt than it's been in any other of all the multitudes of Dracula stuff I've seen. Sure, sure. So that was a little bit like, okay, yeah, so he's bisexual, I guess, but he's always kind of been like that. But it's not like it's 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 not like it goes into like a big Lestat and Louis kind of. I mean, it doesn't go that far. No, because that was totally homoerotic, yes. Right, yes. right. Yes. And I will say, I've never been attracted to Tom Cruise. 
Uh, but oh my god, Tom Cruise's Lestat could totally toss my cookies. <laughs> oh, I, I, okay. Well, I, I don't know. Have we talked about that movie before? I, I oh, we of, have, and you but hate I don't think it, we have on I the show. It. I just, I, well, it was, it was a first date with someone that was bad anyway. But I, I just, I had for me the best thing about that movie was seeing Antonio Banderas for the first time. And it was like, oh, hello, who's this guy? But, like, I'm not a big Brad Pitt person, and I'm absolutely not a Tom Cruise person, but the thing that I really didn't like in that movie is I didn't like their teeth. Oh, like, okay. The fact that, I mean, it's, there. I mean, Christopher Lee could talk with his fucking fangs in his mouth. Why, why can't? Why did they make this enormous full mouth appliance so that they talk like this all the time? Yes, they do. Yes, they I just, do. It's, I found it. It's like, if this is supposed to be like super sexy vampire, then really you're going to go with like, you know, Billy Bob dumbass teeth. It was horrible. But, but maybe, it's, it's so funny. Just... Like, but when that movie came out, remember I was living in the duplex next to you when that movie came out. No, you were not. Not when the Tom Cruise one came out. You were Are in Guatemala. You... Oh, was it that old, dude? I was dating crack boy. Okay, so okay, so when I was living in the duplex, then that's just when you saw it. That's when I first got into the novels. Okay. And then I watched the movie. Okay. Oh, God. Because I remember when those books were popular, I was like Mr. Mr. Goth Boy here in San Jose. Uh-huh. And all my goth, you know, chicky-poo goth friends were so into those books, but I never read them. Yeah. I did not start reading them until... Then, when I was living at the duplex next to you. Okay. Yeah. And then I got into the movie. Right. I guess so. And... But that was... It was old by then. I was so obsessed by that movie that I actually... <laughs> this is no joke. <laughs> I knew that it was wrong and knew that it was bad uh -oh. But I got so into it that I scoured online and got involved with this fan group online. And they claimed that they were really in touch with the true Lestat and the true Louie. Oh my god. Why is this the first time I'm hearing about this? I hope it's because I hope it's because you're terribly ashamed. <laughs> and I was so into that and I wanted that to be true so bad. And I had like candlelight rituals in the duplex oh God. calling with staff to me to come and take me. I was me. right next door. <laughs> Absolutely true. Because I didn't really believe, oh, God, but God, oh, God. I wanted to believe. I oh, wanted to God. believe. No, and I wow. loved that movie so much. And I know I've said this on our show before, but I will say it again because it takes five seconds. Uh-huh. I loved that movie so much okay. that every day when I bought the DVD of it, Every day for at least a month when I came home, the first thing I would do is put that movie on. Oh my god. I watched it that and many you times. Were right next door, and I had no idea. Yep. Yeah. All right, now yeah. let me ask you this because this is very important. The new Netflix Dracula. Hot? Is he hot? Um there are moments of hotness, but... But I think he's hot? You would think he's hot, probably, yes. Okay, okay. You would think that's he's hot, but for me, no, there's moments of hotness, but no. It's not like he has long hair or anything. No, thank God! Oh, my God! 
Yeah. That's another thing that's interesting to me about the, your love of Lestat and Louie with their long-ass hair and everything. I know, but oh my god, I just want Louie to fuck me up the ass with that cold vampire dick. Ugh. That'd be awfully refreshing. Well, like the on a hot summer day. just like sucks the life out of me via neck, you know. Oh my god! <laughs> totally uh, there, totally there. Uh, and then I can live forever. Well, that sounds great. Think of the things <laughs> I could see. Well, yeah, like the like the planet being on fire. Well, I you mean, know, it's not like you that. get to go back in time. You know, you just you just have to live through this bullshit. I know. So yeah, I don't know. It's probably the romance is not anyway. But anyway, oh, oh, I got God. so so obsessed with that. Oh my God! So what was the uh, what was the other thing you? Oh, The Witcher. So so tell me about The Witcher. Is that the thing that Henry Cavill is in? Yes, yes, Because I keep yes. seeing pictures of him, and it's making me realize something, and I probably shouldn't... No, you know what? Fuck it. I shouldn't say that I shouldn't say things, because that's the whole point of this. I Am I the only person in the world that doesn't think Henry Cavill is all that handsome? I think he's hot when he's not playing The Witcher. Well, because, because again... Hair. Goddamn long hair on a man. Like, he looks like someone doing Legolas cosplay. Uh, to God me. does. He looks stupid with that goddamn long fucking hair. But if you look at pictures of him, oh, oh my I God, do. he's like, fuck me now. See, he's been doing a lot of interviews and stuff lately, and I'm just not. I know he was Superman for a while, and he didn't do anything for me then. And I'm seeing all these interviews with him now, and I'm like, I... I think he's I think he's very plain looking. He doesn't have the zazz that I like, you know. And it's not oh, just that he's, he's a big, like burly generic dude. hot white guy. So yeah, yeah, I think he's totally hot. But yeah, he's nothing special. Okay, because like I'm seeing so much gushing over him, and I'm I, I feel I'm I'm feeling a little left out. But but the show. The show is good. Yeah, the show. Okay, good. well, let me talk. Okay, so we're going to talk about the show, but, but before, because I think that, did we finish talking about Dracula? Did I talk about all three episodes? I think so. Because they're really different. I mean, I think so. Oh, okay. Was there something in particular you wanted to say about each one? Well, just say, you know, the third episode of Dracula was really weird because it's now modern times. Oh, only the third one is modern? Yeah, just the third one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that was really weird and unexpected. So the first episode of Dracula was almost boring. Okay. But the second one was interesting because it was totally different. And then the third one was totally different, but it was in modern times. Okay. Because he had been stuck for 123 years in limbo. Okay. And that's kind of a spoiler, but not enough of a spoiler, so you don't really know if you want to watch it, right? Okay. But, oh, that was weird. That was weird. And so it went along sort of like the with the novel that in modern day his... Uh, Chosen one was Lucy, right? Just like in the oh, novel. Right, right. But oh, so not like it was in the book. Okay. And I will say that Dracula's death, or not death, we don't know. Right, right. Was very creative. Okay. So I will give it credit to that. So Okay, that sounds So cool. watch it. First episode, boring, dry. Second two episodes, weird and really interesting and completely, utterly different. Okay, cool. From anything you've seen before, yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. So, The Witcher. Yes. I am going to say something very unpopular. (gasps) More unpopular than my not thinking 
Henry Cavill is attractive? Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. More involved okay. than that, because everything I've read online, in fact, I talked to my dear, fabulous Darren. I've watched the first episode and a half of The Witcher, and I thought it's boring as fuck. Oh, okay. I've never read the books, which is weird, because I read every fantasy series in existence, right? And that seems that seems totally right up your alley. Yeah, but I've never read the books, but I've played Witcher 3, the video game, and I love it so much, I have on my third playthrough of that game. Oh, wow, okay. Allegedly, this series is based on the books... Right. But, oh, my God, girl, it's totally based on the video game. Well, but the video game would have been based on the books. Well, yes, too, and right? the video game, yes, is based on the books. But the way the main character moves... Okay, so The Witcher, for those of you who don't know, The Witcher is a reference to a specific character, Geralt of Rivia. Which that is a like character a made up. in the video games, right? Okay. This actor, real life actor, he moves like he's in a video game. He talks like he's in a video game. Really? He emotes like he's in a video game, which means he just stares into the air because he's supposed to be cold and distant and mysterious. <laughs> Oh, God. Which okay. means there's no facial change whatsoever. Oh, my God. But the interesting thing to me is Henry Cavill, uh -huh. who plays the main character, I was like, oh, my God, is that really his voice? Or are they dubbing his voice with the actor that played Geralt? In the video game, because it sounds exactly like Geralt in the video game, which sounds oh. nothing like Henry Cavill, right? Okay. Um, so I searched the internet, found no evidence of that. To see, or, or that Henry Cavill did the voice for the video game. Yeah. So that didn't oh, either. no, Henry Cavill did not do the voice for the video game. No, totally okay. different guy. Okay. Um... But the interesting thing, so I searched the internet, and I was like, okay, this is really interesting. No evidence of that, but it gives it away. Every once in a blue moon, in his voice, you can hear a little bit of his natural British accent going through. Right. Because he's concentrating so hard on sounding like this guy from the video game. Oh, my God. Which makes it... Absolutely true that this is based on the books, but no, it's not based on the books. It's based on the video games. Oh my god! Oh, it is so not weird. based on the books because the video game sold million millions of copies, and the book sold what fifty copies a piece. I don't know. I never I mean, heard no, of either I mean, of them. No, so I, I mean don't the know. books were popular. I'm just being a bitch. But the books were popular, but nowhere as near as popular as the video games. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you can be a bestseller, and the amount of books you have to sell to be at the top of the New York Times bestseller list is nothing compared to how many movie tickets you have to sell yeah. to have a hit movie or whatever. So, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, the, but that was interesting, like, listening to Harry, Henry Cavill uh -huh. change his voice to be like this voice actor from the video game. Oh, my God. Oh, that's funny. But he does really good because I was honestly like, oh, my God, this is Geralt from The Witcher 3. Oh, that's funny. But it's not. Okay, right. but anyway, so I'm digressing, but, you so, know. So, you, but you thought the first couple were kind of boring? So fucking boring. I went through half of the second episode and I turned it off and I don't know that I can watch anymore. It is fucking boring. Oh my god, that's so weird because, well, maybe a lot of the people that I know who are really, really into it are also people who would be very, very, very want to watch Henry Cavill do anything. That could be true. There could be a correlation. 
So, oh, I can be all into Harry Cavill doing anything as long as he doesn't have a goddamn shoulder length gray wig on. <laughs> oh my god. But, you know, but it made me understand that my personal philosophy, which I know doesn't correspond to everybody, yeah. my personal philosophy, I don't care how cute your face is, I don't care how hot your body is, if you're male, and if you have goddamn long hair, you're not hot. <laughs> Because, God damn it, Henry Cavill is hot and cute. But with that goddamn long hair, oh, no, girl. Oh, no. Oh, you are so your mother's son. <laughs> and I will leave that there. Pitney's New Life Diary. Okay, you guys, I hope I don't sound too stuffy. I have a cold or allergies or something, and I have a sore throat. I have a very close relationship with a box of Kleenex. I don't know what it is, but anyway, whatever. It'll get better. I sound hoarse to myself, but I probably sound pretty normal. I am adjusting to life in San Jose, and I have been exploring nightlife, and I have some fun things to talk to you guys about. And a funny anecdote to share. The funnest thing I've done is discovered that there are four dog-friendly brew pubs here. And my friend Sarah knows them all and knows all the people that work there and knows all the different beers and is kind of a connoisseur. So she's making me try things that I've never tried, and we've been getting what they call a flight, which is these little glasses of all these different kinds, so you can just taste all these different kinds. And the price is pretty reasonable, too. It was like $8 for a flight of like six different beers, which I was really, really surprised by, as opposed to the wine bar in the she she shopping village called Santana Row, which the flights are like like $30. Um, yeah, I won't be doing that again soon. It was one of those, oh, this sounds fun. Let's do that. And then we got the bill and we're like, holy shit, this is like a twice a year thing to do because that's too rich for my blood. The brew pubs were fabulous and it was a lot of fun. And the dog seemed to really enjoy being out, albeit he's very confused. He's never really been out in public like that before. And he's very very nervous around strange dogs in public, which is very strange because he grew up with seven other dogs. I'm hoping it's just adjustment. He's been kind of mopey. I don't think he likes me going to work every night because he's very confused and he's been scratching at the doors and he kind of messed up the paint job in the kitchen door because he was scratching to go out to look out the window in the garage because he likes to watch me leave. So I've been keeping the door open at night um, so he can watch me and hopefully he's going to start getting better because he's been very mopey and I'm a little bit worried Worried, but I know it'll take him a couple months and he's been going on lots of walks and whatnot and so anyway whatever the dog's adjusting I'm hoping he's gonna get his groove on soon um other news I've explored the gay bars here in town and they're pretty lame there's three that I'm aware of but I think there's only three they're very very small nobody goes and I know that there's dance clubs and stuff scattered around town for young people but the scene downtown where the gay thing is, it's real like artsy and and pubby and everything closes at midnight or one, which is a big difference from, from home. Um, although, of course, you know, the gay bars, of course, stay open till two, but I haven't managed to stay out that late yet because, you know, I'm tired and I'm old. But anyway, I went to an underwear party at this bar called Renegades. And it was not as racy as you'd like to think, or I would like to think, but it was fun. But something really funny happened. I ran into this guy that I had known back in the 80s through fandom, and we were never really friends. He was very, very much snotty costume super fan guy, and I was just more fun-loving and crazy. And anyway, we were not compatible as friends, but I reckon 
recognized him and I went up to him and I was like, are you so-and-so? And he said, yes. And I said, you know, I'm Pitney. Do you remember me? And he was like, no, I don't know. And I was like, we knew each other from Legion of Rassilon and from Baycon and Timecon and... I'm friends with Sarah. And he's like, oh, yes, I remember you. But I certainly don't remember you with that bald hair. (laughs) And I just thought that was deliciously, fabulously bitchy. Because it's not like I was ever friends with this queen. But anyway, that's all I got for now. And um, bye. See you next time. Cut that hair, Marie Osmond. Do you see that Melania Trump? Who does she think she is with that hair? She thinks she's so cute. Oh, my God. That was my favorite oh my God. And for those of you who don't remember, because it was mentioned once on a previous episode, my mom hates long hair. I don't and my know mom why. hated long hair, too. My mom, I, I think, yes. I know I said it on our uh, live New Year's Eve Facebook Live broadcast, but... Um, <laughs> The my my mother's opinion of David Lee Roth was, well, he'd be good looking if it wasn't for that hair. Ah! I mean, you know, that's. And I remember, and I'll never forget this, and this will comfort me till the day I die. There was a news clip of Melania Trump giving some press conference somewhere. And there was wind, and her hair was, like, blowing. And my mom's reaction was, Look at that goddamn hair! (laughs) 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 Oh, I'm gonna die. (laughs) I'm gonna die. Uh, uh. But yeah, Henry Cavill fought with the goddamn long witcher hair. Not hot. But I also know there's a lot of women out there that think I'm wrong, and that's that, that's great. That think he's hotter that's in great. a wig. Totally great. Hotter in a wig. I don't know. Yeah, he does. Either way, doesn't there's work a for lot me. of women that are like really attracted to guys with long My hair. My sister's one of them. Yeah, and I know that. And it's you just know, you know one of those things the is like she loved the sorbo. Yeah, and it's like some guys are into the hairy chest, and some guys are in or not, or or, or women. I'm sorry, I'm just talking my I point know. of view, you know. But it's just you know whatever. Yeah, you know i i like I like a man with hair on him. But if a man doesn't have any hair, I, I, you know it's okay. <laughs> I thought I didn't yeah, like hair I until I did the Sasquatch, and then I realized, oh, this is yeah. bad. But I will never, ever, as long as I live, compromise, in my opinion, that uncircumcised is disgusting. Do you know how many British listeners we have? <laughs> I know, but girl, you cut off the umbilical cord. Cut that shit off. It's not even necessary. Oh, God. Because there's nothing more beautiful than a rock hard cockhead. Yeah, but when but but when they're circumcised it pulls back and the head is there anyway. Or have you not been with one? Oh no, I've had bad experiences with that. I mean, where you pull it back and it's not washed and Okay, it's well gross. not washed and gross, not the same thing. That doesn't that's not washed and gross. Or you try to pull it back and it's grown in such a way that you can't pull Ooh, it back. that would hurt. In that, oh, Ooh, girl, God, no. that would hurt for the guy, I would think, because it's supposed oh, to. Oh, girl, no. Ew, that's weird. <laughs> Breathe deeply, deeply, the year of woo. Okay.
Okay, for this installment of Year of Woo, I have decided that because it's New Year's and there's so much change going on in my life and in Amelia's life and several other people that I know, so I have decided to use an oracle deck by Colette Baron reed to do a reading for the new year that would most benefit our listeners. No matter your belief or non-belief in oracle decks, tarot, whatever, my philosophy has always been to use them as a point of thought and a point of reflection, and they never seem to misguide. So anyway, with that being said, let's get into this. I did a six-card reading for everybody, and the, the first card, which represents the very, very recent past, it is a card called the listening card and what that card does is just you know remind everybody there's a time to speak and a time to shut up and listen there has just been a time where we all should have stopped honking our horns and listened to what was going on and not just listening to people's words because people's words are not necessarily the whole picture but really listen and take into consideration with your heart like what is going on around you for whatever issue is going on in your life. You know, observe what people need. Observe what you need. Because as the reading progresses, we're going to get into a little bit of denial and a little bit of a need to let things go in their own way. And you can only really, really allow that to happen by really, really listening to yourself and your heart. That being said, the present moment is is a card called Ride the Wave. Ride the Wave card indicates positive change and that you're on a good path. It does not guarantee it to be instant happiness, but it indicates that you're you're going the right way, like you're listening and you are going towards something that's going to be positive. You're like riding this wave of change that you've gotten by yourself with these realizations. Like, oh, wow, I really, really need this in this situation or my partner really needs this or this friend really is a dick and I need to listen to my heart and follow that. Riding with the wave of that, knowing that it's going to bring healing or something good. Which brings us to the next card, which you resist and that is the follow the leader card, but it is reversed and it is about taking control and not following what people say and not following what people want you to do or following what their expectations say. It is about speaking your own voice, speaking your needs saying what you need and not depend on others to tell you what you need and to really, really look at things harshly. You know, be like, this is what needs to happen to make things work and it's time for me to take control of my life. And I think we all can relate to that on some level. Definitely I can. And interestingly, the unexpected help card is just telling you that it is indeed winter and you need to wait for spring. And that is a very common thing in, you know, pagan philosophy with this time of year being, you know, with the wheel of the year and stuff. So it's interesting that this came up. So you're in this situation where you know you're going through something and you know that you're on the right track. It still doesn't really feel good because maybe you're not used to taking control and maybe you're used to having life just be like, okay, this is what life is giving me and it's just too much effort to change that. Um, Allow those changes to percolate in your mind. It's hard to all of a sudden go from letting outside events control you to really, really take control of yourself. It's like a whole new mindset. And this is indicating that it's the time to focus on that mindset and wait for it to materialize. So yeah, grab the bull by the horns, but then you realize you got to kind of wait for this to become a permanent thing because it's new, you know, and it's leading to a situation where there is going to be some sort of loss. And that is a necessary thing. You know, change always involves some 
some sort of loss or sorrow or adjustment. And that's okay. That is the next best action to take right now is to allow that loss to happen. Don't dwell in it, but realize that by taking control of your life and your own emotions and really listening to yourself, yeah, things are going to change and it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable, but you know what? Deal with it. It's winter. Rest. Allow yourself some self-care. Allow all that stuff to percolate and continue listening because this is like a circle. You know, remember the ride the wave of positive change, which is interesting because the very last card, the probable outcome is the magic stream, which is allowing your life to flow and allow your connection with others to flow and allow in a positive way, allow life to happen. Express what you need, but then you got to wait and see what happens because change is not going to happen overnight. That's going to take some time. Keep working on it. Take the lead. Express your own reality. But know that it's going to hurt. And that's not a bad thing. Pain is often good and healing. Anyway, I could go on and on and on with this reading, but I think it's pretty cool. It's not necessarily roses and bells and happiness, but I think that it's apropos, especially for me and from what I know is going on in other people's lives. And um, yeah, go with the flow, take control of your own life and allow that to, you know, allow that in your heart and see what happens. And of course, you can write to me and share your stories. And if this was relevant to you, let me know. And if it's not relevant to you, or you think it's not, give it a consideration. Okay, see you next time. (laughs) Oh, speaking of our European fans, um, who the hell are you in Finland? We have at least one fan in Finland that downloads regularly from us, and they must not be following us on Twitter because I tweet about it, but hi, Finland, whoever you are, please, please. Oh my please God, yes, us. hello. I'd love to know who you are. Finland, hi. Finland, Finland, you know, Scandinavia. I mean, it could be a chick. We don't know, but it might be a it might be a guy. It might be a really cute, like blonde guy. I don't know. I don't care who it is. I'd love to meet know. you. Hello. Yes. Because you're fabulous, whoever you are. Because obviously, you have excellent taste, whoever you are. And also, while I'm at it, there's this area around like the southern border of. Washington State and the northern part of Oregon. Who the hell is there like an entire like commune of people downloading us every day? I mean, I know download stats are weird, but when all when there's like one part of the country where almost all of your downloads come from, that's really weird. And it came out of nowhere. It didn't used to be there. And within the last like six months or so. The majority of our listeners are apparently in Yakima and R- Pasco. Again, I don't know, and this may be, which I won't say his real name because I know that he doesn't like his real name online, but it might be um, my straight friend. Hello, and I know you're straight. But the most beautiful man in the world who goes online is Tiberius. Or some of his friends. I'm thinking that it might be maybe them. But but I don't know. Where do they live? Uh, Oregon, Washington, depending on the time of the year. Like enough to do like 100 downloads a week? Oh, God, I, yeah, I don't know I'm about serious, that. I'm talking about a lot. I mean, it used to be that, like, the Bay, the San Francisco Bay Area was our was our target. But, yeah, that was where everybody was. But, man, you, you San Francisco people, you, you got nothing compared to those Oregon and Washington people. I don't know who the hell they are. Yeah, I don't know. Or I got it's cousins not even a real there. place like Portland. It's, you know, it's not yeah, like Portland. Yeah, I got Seattle. cousins it's up there. Kennewick. Maybe it's my cousins that are subversively fans of me. Oh, my God. You know. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, my God. <sighs> but I love it. Keep on listening and write to us and tell us who you are. 
We're so fascinated by by people who are fascinated by us. <laughs> <laughs> because we think we're awesome. So if you think we're awesome, we have something in common. I'm just fascinated. <laughs> I love people in general, you know. Well, I like certain people. I, I People, well, I, I, I think the problem, people as individuals, I like. People in groups can go fuck themselves. Well, yeah. People in groups need to, like, stay away. Because they're in groups. And, I, and they need to be quiet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the Bitchin' Boutique. Yes. Um, I think we need to give them a thing, Spike. We can give them a drop that they could play on their yes. show. Yes, I think we've uh, got to find some time and get, get time to do, do that. Right now. I think we should do it right now. Look, I'll show you how easy it is, Spike. <laughs> Watch this. I'm just going to do it live. Okay, do it live. Like that bloke screams. I'm just going to do it live. Watch this. Hi, this is Dr. Dan from the Two Skeptical... Sh- Blah, I can't do it now. Look, I can't speak. <laughs> Too much pressure. I'll try again. I'll try again. I'll try again. Take 52. Hi, this is Dr. Dan from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, and you are listening to the most bitching boutique. See? That was easy, wasn't it? Okay. They could send us one. We could play it in ass. Yeah, yeah. Right, you do it. Yeah. Right. What do you want me to say? Whatever, whatever comes to mind. Hi, this is Spike from the Two Skeptical Chaps podcast, who ain't no bitch, but you're listening to The Bitch and Boutique. Oh, that was good. I think I hope they use that. Let's see if they cut it and put it in the next show. <laughs> Diplomatic community. <laughs> I've just been having a lot of trauma. You know, we just got through the holidays, and I'm very tired. I'm also very sick. Do, 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 do people in the rest of the country know that in central Texas, there's this kind of cedar tree that orgasms tons of pollen into the air, and, like, to the point where you can taste it on your lips when you go outside, and... That shit can kill you. I, it's like, I, I went, I lived so many years not being allergic to it. And then one day, like, uh, it was 2008. Uh, I almost, I almost went deaf. The entire inside of my head swelled shut. I couldn't hear a goddamn thing. And it wasn't like normal allergies. It was like, I'm going to die. And, um, I had a cold over Christmas and, the, the irritated mucous membranes just opened it up that as soon as the cedar pollen went up, I have, I'm so fucking sick, you guys. It's amazing I can talk right now. I have had to mute myself several times to cough, but I'm dying. So, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> yes, I know. And you don't live You've here anymore. Terrible. You don't live here anymore, so you don't have to deal with it. Oh my God, listen to me. Ugh. Thank God there's soup being made downstairs. I have to go eat my soup. Because I'm an old person. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, I know. It's great. It's beautiful here. Although I will say... Well, it's beautiful here too, but I can't yeah. go outside. The weather is perfect. And the wind is blowing, which is why there's fucking pollen everywhere. Yeah, although I will say just like, you know, my fantasy of California weather... Uh-huh. Which is, you know, I haven't lived here in a long time. Obviously, and it's changed. It's, huge. it's changed a lot. Oh, yeah. But the last three days have been, like, cool and breezy well, and January. blue skies and beautiful. Okay, blue skies and beautiful is weird for January. Yeah, but the whole time that I've been here before that, the last three weeks, overcast, windy, Fucking cold. That sounds like California. Drizzly, rainy, ice on my car in the morning. Really? And I was like, oh, oh yeah, I forgot about this. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, you'll you'll enjoy the fact that it gets over 100 in the summertime now. I know. They do. Yes. A lot of people don't still don't have air conditioning in their houses God because they never needed it damn before. Damn it. But it's not like... It, it is in Texas. No, but... It's yet! Weird. It's yet! Be weird. Yet! <laughs> well, yes. <laughs> anyway! Well... 
<laughs> yeah, which reminds me when we're done. I don't know why this reminded me of this. Remind me when we're done with this. Oh, I think we're done. A hilarious message that I got on Scruff yesterday that I have to read to you because it's so fucking. Trashy. Oh, I think we're done. I, just gonna. Make I am you willing scream. to call this. I'm. I'm willing to call this done just so I can hear that right now. Let's do oh, that. Oh yes, because oh my god, <laughs> yes. Okay, so this is a message that I got from this guy's screen name is Toilet Mouth Hosting. (laughs) And this is his description. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. My tongue deep cleans. Okay. My tongue deep cleans a shithole. My mouth swallows your feces with pleasure. Easy going construction worker here. Straight acting and drama free. Uh Horny and ready for hot action with chill buds. (laughs) Love fetishes and hardcore role playing. And then then it goes on. Kinky and raunchy toilet. (laughs) Kinky and raunchy toilet bottom pig slut. Looking to rim and deep tongue a dirty, musky, slim guy asshole. I will eat all that's there in it. Deep canal. Receive all the shit you want to dump and feed me in my mouth. I also love sucking cock and getting fucked if you want. I'm into all types of guys. No pick trading. Real action only. Oh, wow. Wow. So this guy wrote to me. Oh. What was his and what was his he, name again? Toilet Mouth Hosting. Oh, Toilet Mouth Hosting. Who hurt you? Uh, yes. <laughs> and then so this is so the, the the message I got was very tame, but I did not respond, nor will I. Oh. But he just said, in San Jose right now, hosting in hotel room. Looking to eat dirty ass, suck cock, get fuck, nasty, kinky, raunchy sex. You're hot. Are you down with that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I I am immediately struck by how poetic that is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, hold Did on. Did your Let mother me, just hear on. that? Uh, no, no, no. She just walked in. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so everybody, this is your your. If 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 anything sounds really weird about this episode, it's because this is our first episode where it's a full episode where we're sitting in different states and we're, you know, like like real podcasts do, where we have like separate microphones and editing and it's it's good it's it's an it's an adventure (laughs) oh yeah so we hope it sounds good and we might episodes for a while might have some slightly different sounds while we figure out what works best because this is a whole different world for us yeah we're working it out and i've been like playing with different settings on mine so yeah yeah. bear with us yeah we'll we'll figure it out I mean, you know, we're, we're, we still want to try to make it sound like we always did, like you're just sitting in a room with us, but it's kind of, I mean, we're, we're not, we're not trying to be like, like, you know, we're not, we don't want to sound like we're on NPR or anything, you know, like get a really, really close and, and be like, oh, that sounds really interesting. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to be that phony bullshit like a lot of podcasts do. You know who you are. I don't know, but I would love to be Terry Gross, but, you know. Oh, she's kind of pissing me off lately. Oh! (laughs) Well, because she... Okay, did you hear about the thing about Adam Driver? No. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh, I was so team Adam Driver. I'm I'm always team Adam Driver, but in case people don't know what I'm talking about, he went on... He went on Fresh Air, and he had had, like, an agreement with them that he doesn't watch himself in movies he doesn't he doesn't do that and it gives him like 
major anxiety and he doesn't want to do it. And the thing was, it's not like it was live. It's not, you know, there was no fucking reason for those NPR producers to just go, okay, well now we're going to have you watch this scene from your movie and then you can talk about it. And he just got up and walked out. And all these people were talking about him being a piss, a, you know, a pussy little bitch, but it's like, man, taking care of your shit, you know, setting a boundary and sticking by it and not letting people get away with shit. That ain't no pussy little bitch, especially at this point in my life where I'm learning how to do that kind of shit yeah. and not, and not be treated like crap. Oh yeah. Yeah. Team Adam Driver. Oh yeah. Yeah. I read about that. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I was totally on board with him. Oh my God. I wish I'm course, not necessarily a fan of him. You know, I'm more of a fan of Terry Gross than I am of him. In the real, you know, in the right. big scene well, because of things. You're, you're but, yeah, a non-stop that was, yeah, they, listener. She, she crossed his boundaries and that's fucked up. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, um, and of course, Terry Gross made me think about that one time where she did that really weird, infamous uh, interview with Gene Simmons. Yes! Which, which makes me think of something else that you didn't see because you were not on Twitter, Pitney, which is apparently Gene Simmons puts ice cubes in his cereal. Oh, really? Why? And he tweeted He tweeted it. He, like, took a picture of his bowl of cereal. He has two different, two different cereal boxes. He pours two different... One is like a brand pillow kind of thing, like a, like a frosted mini wheat. And uh-huh. the other is like some sort of blueberry looking giant fruit loop looking thing. And then he puts ice cubes in it. And, um, and the internet went, what? Well, like why? I, I, I mean, you can make the milk cold. Like I don't, I really don't. I mean, I can't understand water. water or juice because, you know, our friend Steve eats cereal with orange juice, which totally makes sense to me, right? But ice cubes? Ice cubes. It's really weird. It's really, really weird. Maybe Gene... Maybe ice cubes somehow makes the love gun shout it out loud. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) You know, he's a... He's a rock star. Which at this yeah. point in his life, you don't necessarily want to think about that. I'm just, you know, I was just happy to see he was getting his fiber. Yeah. I mean, we all we all know that as you get older, fiber, very important. Oh, you know, you goodness, goodness sakes, it snakes alive and it's ready to bite. <laughs> Maybe he needs that extra boost. <laughs> <laughs> How did I even remember that song? <laughs> that you know is from, that? for those of you who don't know, a lyrical gem from Fits Like a Glove off side two of the Lick It Up album yes, it by Kiss. Well, the reason you remember it is because you, you've listened to Lick It Up 10 billion times. Uh, yes. It's a great album. I mean, it's not like you grab some <laughs> random thing off of, like, Asylum. You know, or it makes him no longer than larger than life. <laughs> Side four of Kiss Alive Two. Oh God! <laughs> I mean, we love them, but come on. I mean, they're ridiculous. I mean, but ridiculous things yes. are good. Uh, good times. I could probably go on and on and on about, but oh, I sure. won't. Oh, so, you know. But I will not. No, I don't think so. We don't need to do that. But yeah, actually, like, Fits Like a Bluff, Lick It Up, a really good fucking song. Larger Than Life, Kiss Alive 2, really good fucking song. <laughs> Listen to it. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I'm running out of things to talk about. <laughs> oh, Hornet's Nest. Ooh, I'm on to shed my skin. I got the urge to merge. You're as cold as ice. Ooh. Baby, won't you let me in? You're as cold as ice in my cereal. <laughs> and I will close with that. Babe, wait, you're, you're wait. Baby, 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 I guess you win the prize. In- baby, 
baby, where the sun never shines. <laughs> I'm just, I'm trying to figure out a way to work golden grams into it. <laughs> <laughs> It must be love, it must be love, cause it fits like a glove. (laughs) 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 I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Thanks for listening. If you enjoy our show, please take a moment to rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher. If you send us a screenshot of your review, we'll send you a Bitchin' Boutique sticker. Everyone Everyone loves loves stickers. stickers! Please subscribe or add us to your favorites wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribers get new episodes first and are also more attractive. Drop us a line anytime at pitneyandamelia at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, so anyway, oh so it's, anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, God, I was so concerned. I thought she, I thought she heard you. Oh, my God. I thought she heard you reading oh, that. Oh, no, and even if she well, did. Well, she's so, no, she's no, so she, deaf, she wouldn't have heard it really anyway. But, oh, my God, I was dying when I thought she heard you. <laughs> yeah, and anyway, so this guy, but there's no, he doesn't, unfortunately, he does not have any pictures of himself because I'm dying to know what he looks like. I'm going to guess not but cute. I, just a guess. Yeah, but I don't want to write him back because I don't want to have any any you know interaction with him. Not but not even it's for the very show. Curious. Not even for our listeners. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Where's your dedication? It's Penny? pretty scary. <laughs> I know. <laughs> But I found that very amusing. I found him very but amusing. But what I was going to say before your mother interrupted us, <laughs> what I was going to say was that that there's something very poetic about what he wrote. And I I think it would sound really good with like an Egyptian lover beat under it. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we, I, uh, you know what? We may have to work on that. Just a little bit. Just a snip. You know. Yeah. No, it's a...